What is up, you guys? It's Avery here, and I have a very interesting deck profile for you guys today. Probably something that you would not expect to see on a regular basis, but <laughs> here it is. It's Armed Dragons. That's right, you guys. Um, now, before I get into the deck profile, I do want to say that all credit goes to Lucas Peterson on TCG Player. Um, I get a lot of my crazy deck profiles and just deck ideas in general from a uh, TCG player, whether it's from Lucas Peterson doing his rerouting series or because Doug Zeef posted a deck on TCG player, whatever the case may be, I get a lot of my decks from TCG player. So I would highly suggest you go and check out uh, the article that Lucas Peterson wrote. It's called rerouting arm dragons. Um, go and give that article uh, a read and leave them a comment, let them know that it's a good article, and all that, tell them that Avery sent you. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and dive into this deck here. So, the basis of this deck is to basically crap out Arm Dragon level 5 <laughs> as quick as you can, and for even more fun trollsies, uh, we are running Dark Symorg, and I just took that out of the deck by accident. We are running uh, Dark Symorg, because it actually combos really well with the Nijitsu engine that we're running. Uh, because you can go Super Transformation um, to get out Arm Dragon level 5 since it's Dragon, Dinosaur, or Sea Serpent. And then Super uh, Nijitsu Art of Transformation, you can get a Beast, Wing Beast, or Insect. Well, this is a Wing Beast and it's a level 7. So you tribute Hanzo. Nijitsu Art of Transformation is the level plus 3. So since that's 7, you can get out Dark Sign Morgue, which is very, very nice, <laughs> which can really slow down the opponent. So let's just go ahead and dive into the deck profile here, and we'll um, go along. We'll read the effects as we go. So we got, of course, the big Arm Dragon level 5, level 7, and level 10. We're not playing any of the other Arm Dragons just because they're pretty much garbage. Um, arm Dragon level 5 is not the best thing in the world, but it's, it's decent for what it needs to do. And what it does is you send a monster card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy one face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field with an attack equal to or less than the attack of the sent monster. So if you send another Arm Dragon level 5 from your hand to the graveyard, you can pop a monster with 2400 or less attack on the field. During the end phase of a turn, that this card destroyed a monster as a result of battle, send this card to the graveyard to special one Arm Dragon level 7 from your hand to your deck. That's why he's not all that good, because you can't just tribute him to special him. He has to destroy a monster in battle, which is kind of a shame. Um, but we do have a workaround with that in the form of level modulation. Uh, and then we have Arm Dragon level 7. He can't be normal summoned or set. He can only be special summoned by the effect of Arm Dragon level 5 or level modulation. Um, you send a monster card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy all face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field with an attack equal to or less than the attack of the sent monster. <clears throat> so it's, it's literally an upgrade. Level 5 pops one monster, level 7 pops all the monsters as long as the attack is equal to or less, and then level 10 just destroys everything. <laughs> he can't be normal summoned or set. You have to tribute an Arm Dragon level 7, and then you send one card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. I wish I just said all monsters, but <laughs> this card came out forever ago, so, you know, it's whatever. And then we have an artifact engine. We have two scythe, one morale attack. Um, to go along with that, we of course have the three sanctum. We've got Cook Mirror Drago. Um, in case you don't know what this does, during each of your end phases, you destroy it unless you send one iron core Cook and Mirror from the hand of the graveyard or reveal a dragon type monster in your hand, and then neither player can start some light or dark monsters. So it's not really amazing in today's format. I mean, it can really shut down the 60 card light sworn decks and the 60 card zombie decks, but it really doesn't do much against Zodiac or Infernoid. So we're just playing one because it's a very good stunny based card. Um, something else I forgot to mention was Dark Symorg. Um, he's also treated as a wind when he's facing on the field, so he's treated as both dark and wind. And he has a lot of good recursion. Like he's he was way ahead of his time when he was released. Like a lot of people overlooked him, but he's actually very good. You banish a dark monster and a wind monster from your graveyard to special summon him from your hand. Then you banish a dark monster and a wind monster from your hand to special summon him from the graveyard. So this is a wind, this is wind, wind, light, light, wind, dark, dark, dark. Or Earth, excuse me, but you have a decent amount of darks and winds. So then for the spells, we have two instant fusion, one Raigeki, one Rota, one level modulation, one upstart goblin, three pot of duality, and two forbidden chalice. Uh, level modulation is actually one of the worst cards in the level, I guess, archetype, just because it's not all that good, but we are playing one because it kind of gets you there with your plays. Um, your opponent draws two cards. Period. Like, that's that's just it. You special, then, once that resolves, you special summon a monster from your graveyard that includes LV in its card's name, ignoring the summoning conditions, and that monster special summoned by this effect cannot attack nor activate or apply its effect this turn. So, pretty much the play 
that Lucas said that you do is you activate level modulation. The opponent draws two cards. Fine, whatever. You get out uh, an LV monster from your graveyard, so preferably level 7, since it ignores the summoning condition. Then you contribute level 7 in order to get out uh, level 10. Um, or if you can somehow get level 10 into the graveyard, then you can just activate level modulation and get out level 10. But it's better to do, like, say, level 5 or level 7. Preferably level 7, just because then you contribute it for level 10 and then swing for 3,000 attack. So, yeah. And then for the traps, we have three Sanctum, again with the Artifact Engine, one Bottomless, two Floodgate, one Jitsu Order Transformation, two Super Transformation, two Call the Haunted, three Strike, and one Warning. And of course the Hanzos, they have the effect that uh, to add a Jitsu card to your hand. So, it's of course good. For the extra deck, we have uh, Norden, one Camion Wizard, two Lightning, two Utopia, one Dark Rebellion, one Anti-Luminescent Knight, one Ragn Zero, uh, one Castell, one Samurai, one Emerald, one Abyss Dweller, one Cowboy, and one Reflasia. So I have yet to test this deck, but I really wanted to show it off to you guys because it just seems like it would be a lot of fun to play. You could really pants some people at Locals or something um, with this deck. I think if you were experienced enough with the meta and with a deck like this, I mean, it could maybe top an event or something. I think it could really pants people because they're not expecting you know an arm dragon deck they see you playing 40 cards in your deck and that you're playing arm dragons they're like free win right and then you're like nah fam you twin twister me artifact sanctum get out of sight then you just kind of lose that turn and then i can just go off arm dragon level 10 and blow away your monsters so yeah you guys uh this is armed dragons <laughs> um i know another good set of lv monsters was like horus I remember I used to play Horse of Black Flame Dragon Level 8 for the longest time just because it was so good. Because he just, he gave the activation and effect of any spell card and just destroyed it. Uh, which would actually be really good in today's meta, now that I think about it. Um, and it's 3,000 attack too, but I think the Armed Dragons are a little bit better just because of the fact that um, it's easier to base a deck around them. Whereas like, Horus is a bit more difficult. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um... Do you guys want to see more deck profiles like this? I can always go on TCG Player and find some. What do you guys think about this Iron Dragon deck in general? I'll be curious to see what you guys have to say. So thank you guys for watching as always, and subscribe if you have not already.